Hello, hello, and welcome to the Love Lindsay podcast. I'm your host, Lindsay Wheeler. A military wife and mom who's built two successful businesses and launched a charity to give back to military families. We are grateful for where we are today, but the road to get here has not always been easy. My hope is that this show will be a chance to pay forward some of the lessons that I've learned to help others and also to learn right along with you by creating conversations with people who inspire me so that we can all show up a little bit better tomorrow than we did today. Thanks for being here. Enjoy the show. Hello, hello, friends, and welcome back. On today's episode, I want to talk about a topic that has made a huge difference in my life and in my business, and I think it's one that everybody can relate to, whether you are building a business or trying to make some personal changes in your life for the better, if you're working on personal growth or development, starting something new, stepping out, taking a leap, all the things that I feel so passionate about, I really think that this is going to resonate with you. And the focus of today is protecting your focus and guarding your circle. So what do I mean by that? Well, we've all heard you are who you spend the most time with, right? You are the accumulation of the five people you spend the most time with or something to that effect, right? And now I get it. If you're in that season of like babies and toddlers and those are the people that you spend all your time with, I get that. I have been there. But even then, you are probably talking to your mom or your sister or your friend, you're commiserating about what that kind of stage is like, and you're also celebrating all the beautiful things. But there are still people, even if you are in that stage, there are still people that you're interacting with. And what I have found is, whether you realize it or not, those people are having massive impacts on you, on your motivation, on your attitude, on your drive, on your outlook towards the world, because you are what you consume. If you are around someone who is super upbeat and positive and excited and a go-getter, it's motivating. You see that they're doing it and that you could do it too. But it also means if you're around someone who is really struggling, who feels like the world is against them, you're probably going to feel that way too. If you're building a business and somebody says, oh, there's no way you can do that. You shouldn't do that. You should stop. And if you listen to them, that can have a huge impact on you. You can stop before you ever really get going. Whereas if you're around people who are like, you know what? It is hard. I have been there, but you just got to keep going. Get back up. Today's a new day. You can do this. And I hope that this conversation will be that encouragement to you to get back up and keep going, whatever that thing is in your life that you're working on, but also to recognize those situations when they happen and change the conversation. So the hard part of this is, one, I think recognizing when those things are happening, life, business, getting healthy, whatever it is that you're, that you're doing or you're working towards, it isn't easy. There's going to be really hard days. There's going to be days that you are going to want to quit. Plain and simple. It is life. It is human nature. You're going to want to quit. But I hope that you will think back on this and that you won't quit, that you will keep going because you will find those people in your life. If that's re-listening to this podcast, if that is going and finding something on someone on social media that inspires you, picking up the phone and calling someone, but you need those people in your circle who inspire you. You need people around you who believe in you and who are pushing you to be the best version of yourself. Not people who are trying to bring you down because they are too afraid to try the thing that you are doing. I think that was the biggest aha moment for me in growing my business and really stepping out and trying to do new things is when people would kind of push back on that, like, oh, are you sure you wanna do that? Ooh, I don't know if that's a good idea. No, maybe, maybe, maybe in five years, maybe when your kids are in school, that's a good idea. I had a lot of people who care about me, who were not so supportive of me starting a business when my husband was deployed and I had two little kids who didn't understand these like, you know, crazy personal growth things that I was trying to do or fitness goals. They just didn't understand it. Like, oh, you don't have to go to the gym today. That's so silly. 75 days in a row. Oh, come on. You can skip one day. Like, come have lunch with us. When in reality, Yeah, I did. I'd love to go have lunch with them, but 
I needed to do this thing for me because I didn't want to break the promise to myself. So now that doesn't make those people bad. It doesn't make family members bad because we all know some of those people that maybe are the hardest on us when it comes to decisions or whose opinions affect us the most are those really close to us. So that doesn't mean that you never talk to your mom again. That doesn't mean that you, you know, break down these relationships or you give up on people. That's not what it's about. But I think when you have these tools and you can recognize, man, they are really steering me in a direction that I don't want to go in. All you have to do, you don't have to have confrontation. You have to fight with people. You don't have to shake them to see the light that you have seen. All you have to do is change the conversation, right? There's power in that. But I think too many times we sit in that conversation and we allow somebody else's opinions of what we're doing or somebody else's hard times to really bring us down because we're sort of wallowing in it with them. Instead, we can just change the subject, right? If someone doesn't understand that you are cutting out meat and they can't wrap their head around that because that's not something that they would ever do, or you're going to the gym every day for 75 days because you're doing this crazy challenge or whatever that looks like, just because they don't understand it doesn't mean that it isn't for you because you get to make those decisions, but don't let those outside influences affect you. I have this saying, if it's not saving me time, making me money or inspiring me, I don't have time for it. So if it's someone knocking what I'm doing or making me doubt it, I don't have time for that. I can change the conversation to something that is more inspiring, motivating, right? But I control what I consume. And if I'm allowing those things to eat at me, if I'm allowing those things to keep me from doing something, from working towards a goal, then that's on me. Because what I've learned is usually when people say those kinds of things, right? That's them speaking from their fear, not mine. It has nothing to do with me. And once I realized that, it gave me the freedom to ignore it, to brush it off, to let it roll off my shoulders and say, you know what? I'm sorry that that was your experience. I am really excited about what I'm doing and I feel really passionately about it. And I hope that you'll support that. And then you can move on. End of story, right? Those don't have to be the people you go to when you're talking about your business or when you're talking about your health, right? You can talk about the weather. You can talk about, you can go to coffee and talk about something else. But you have to recognize who your people are. So if you're protecting your focus, you are not going to allow people to kind of pull you down that negative road. You're going to stop it right when it starts. And you're going to say, gosh, I'm so sorry that you feel that way. I'm really loving it. Moving on. Right. Or gosh, you know what? I know it is a sacrifice to get up every day and go to the gym, but I'm feeling great. So I'm going to stick with it. What are you guys doing later this afternoon? I'd love to meet up with you after. Or even better, invite them to come with you. Those are the kind of people that you want in your circle. So if you're protecting your focus, you're not allowing things to get you off track, right? Like, oh my gosh, there was this article. Oh my gosh, did you see this? Those are always going to happen, right? Every day, (laughs) those are always going to happen. They're going to be those people. And maybe they're sending you something and it, it really does come from a good place. They're genuinely concerned. But you have to be confident enough to say, hey, I'm really happy with what I'm doing right now, but I appreciate your concern. But I feel good about the decisions that I've made and you move on, right? Change the subject. That's all you have to do. But if you allow yourself to get sucked into that and overthink it, oh my gosh, maybe they're right. Maybe I don't know what I'm doing. Maybe this is wrong. Oh my goodness. We've all been there. We've all gone down that road of self-doubt. Life is hard. Trying new things is hard. It is full of ups and downs and wondering, what have I done? Oh my gosh, am I supposed to be doing this? Is this a sign from the universe that I shouldn't be doing this? If you're looking for a way, you will find it. If you are looking for an excuse, you'll find that too, right? So what are you looking for? The problem is, is when we have those people that are kind of pulling us away from our focus or those people in our circle who maybe have other motives or another agenda for us, it makes it so much harder to focus on what is real and what we can control. It is harder to find the way. It is easier to find the excuse when that's what's being offered to you. 
And the people that get to that goal, that live that most fulfilled life that I want all of you to live, they are finding a way. That's the only difference between where you are right now and where you want to be is finding a way. You find a way, right? Obstacles are in the way. You find a way up, around, over, under, whatever you have to do. But those same people who are trying to not get you to not go to the gym tomorrow, even though you said you were going to do it every day for 30 days, those people who are like, oh, you don't really want to do that business, do you? It's okay if you quit. Those people are offering you an excuse, but you have a choice whether you take it or not. And I'm hoping that if you feel passionately about something, if that is your health, your business, personal growth, whatever that looks like, that if you feel passionately enough about it to put in the consistent effort, that you will also be passionate about protecting your focus towards it. And you will be passionate about guarding your circle. Someone once told me, if you are the most successful, the most positive, and the most inspiring person in your circle, you need a new circle. And that really resonated with me. That's right. I need to be around people who are inspiring me, who are pushing me, who are showing me the way. I love how so many amazing women in business have broken through glass ceilings and then they didn't just stay up there by themselves. They turned back around and they offered a hand to someone who was in the steps, in the same footsteps that they were in and they showed them the way. They, they, they handed them, you know, an arm and lifted them up and said, hey, listen, I did it. You can do it too. Here's the path. That's what's so powerful about a great community. That's what's so powerful about an awesome circle is that these are people who understand, who have sacrificed, who have put in the consistent work to do something really awesome for them and their families and their community and chase big goals they know what it's like to be there. They know what it's like to have walked in your shoes. They know what it's like to have faced adversity, to have had people in their life that they cared about very much not support them. They get it, but they did it anyways. I want you to do it anyways. And I want you to recognize those moments when you feel like you're getting taken off course, when someone is hijacking your focus and you're going to take back control because that's what you can do because it's not their life. It's not their goals. It's not their commitment. It's yours. And at the end of the day, no one else can live your life, but you. So don't live your life for your mom or your kids or your husband or your best friend or someone you see on social media. Decide what really matters to you be laser focused on that and then find a way to make that a reality. Your circle, if you feel like your circle right now is maybe not the people who are going to push you and inspire you. Maybe those are the people who kind of want you to stay where you are because that makes them feel comfortable. They're not bad people. They're amazing people, people that love and care about you, but they also are most likely projecting their fear of failing, their fear of rejection onto you. That isn't your story. You get to decide what you're fearful about. You get to decide what you're gonna do about that fear. Are you gonna use it to be the fire in your belly to go do that thing that you wanna do? Or are you going to play small? And I don't want anybody to play small. I can remember early on in my business, just to give an example, I had won an award and I was so proud of the hard work and, uh, and I had had some of my peers, several said, oh my gosh, congrats. I'm so, I'm so happy for you. I wish I sold as much as you, but, but, right. I really like spending time with my kids. Oh, that's like a knife to the heart. Because we, anyone who is a mom, you have mom guilt. I swear it happens like the moment that that baby is born, you have mom guilt. You're the working mom has guilt about working to stay at home. Mom has guilt about staying at home. Like it's just a part of it. And it is 
so frustrating, but it is real. We all have it because we all want to give our kids the very best. And that hit at the core of something in me that just devastated me because what I took from that comment was because I had hit a rank or had sold a certain amount that I had sacrificed spending time with my kids or I had sacrificed a great relationship with my kids. And that stung. I am not going to lie, friends, that stung. And it took me a while to realize that while those are amazing people and I love them, those are not my inner circle people, right? I can love them, but those aren't the people that I want in my immediate circle because I don't want to dim my light. I don't want to play smaller to make other people feel comfortable. At the end of my life, I'm the only one who is going to have regrets if I don't live into my full potential. They're not thinking about me. I have to take control and I have to have that that power and take it back. So if I'm fiercely protective of my focus and I fiercely guard my circle, it can have massive positive impacts if those are the right people right? I'm not writing people off. I'm not never talking to someone again. But what I have learned is the sting of those conversations about, you know, spending time with your kids, you know, implying that I wasn't a good mom if I sold so much, or if you won an award, or if you reached a different rank, or if you chased that goal. The reality was it did. It took me a while to learn. But that, that statement wasn't about me. It was directed at me, right? But what I learned is it wasn't really about me. That was their issue. And when I could recognize it, while it can still sting, right? Things can still hurt us, but it didn't have a lasting impact. I could have played smaller. I could have said, oh gosh, maybe they're right. Maybe I can't be a good mom and chase this goal. Maybe I can't do both. What am I doing? but I am so grateful that I didn't allow that to happen. Have I made mistakes? Absolutely. That's what life is. That's what business is. We are trying to fail forward and learn every day, show up a little bit better than we did yesterday. But I am proud. I have a great relationship with my kids. I love them. They see me hustling and working towards a goal. They see me achieving big things for our family. They work arm in arm with me so that we can do it as a family. I think that is a very, very powerful lesson that I get to teach my kids because of choices that I made and because of sacrifices and because of hard work. I didn't let anybody else's fears about being able to do both or being able to balance it or why they weren't doing something. It wasn't my issue because that's not my story. This is my story. And so I'm so glad that I remained focused I put my focus in my priorities. I focused on my family. I focused on, you know, on my business and and just laser focused on those things that I knew that I needed to work on to get where I wanted to be. But I also, I blocked out the things that weren't serving me. I changed the conversation when things were allowing my focus to go off track. When I recognize them now, I can change the tone instead of of it allowing it to affect me long-term or to steer me off course. So when you think about protecting your focus, what does that look like? What are your priorities? If your priorities are going to the gym every day and you are going to set a great example for your family or you're going to do this for yourself, then do it. And if someone tries to take you off track, don't hold it against them, but recognize it and say, gosh, you know, I would love to meet you guys for lunch, but I am, I got to go to this class. I committed to doing it, but I will text you when I'm done. And I'd love to meet up with you guys. Done. And then find somebody that wants to go to the class with you. Cause that's where your circle comes in. 
you want that person in your life who is, who, when you want to quit, right, is going to lift you up and say, come on, let's just go. Let's just go for 10 minutes, right? Let's go for a 10 minute walk. And if at that point we want to be done, we'll be done. But at least we did something. That's the kind of people you want in your corner. Those are the kind of people that are lifting you and pushing you to show up as your best self. That's the kind of person that I want to be. I want to be that for somebody else because I know so many people have been that for me. They've said, no, you can do it, right? I got this really beautiful necklace uh, for Christmas and it says, she can be both. And I love that. And the message behind it was, she can be a leader and a great mother. She can be both. And anybody that tells you that you can't is speaking from their own fears and their own insecurities, not yours. So this is your story to tell. Are you protecting your focus? Are you not allowing anything to get you off track? If you want it really bad, you will fiercely protect your focus. If you want it really bad, you will take a good look at your circle and you will recognize those people that are lifting you and you will recognize those people that you are doing all the lifting. And it's great to serve other people. It's amazing to try and be that inspiring person in a circle, but you can't always be the one lifting. You need people in your life also who are lifting you because you cannot pour from an empty cup. So you need to take care of yourself and you need to feel inspired. And sometimes friends, that might be a book that you read. That might be words through a page, not an actual physical person that is coming to go on a walk with you. It just might be that message that you heard. It might be a podcast. It might be a post that you see on social media. It can be anything. That inspiration and that circle doesn't necessarily have to be a person that you know. It can be anywhere, anything that inspires you. But I do think it is really powerful to have that person that you can send a text to when you're dragging and you just don't want to do it. And they're going to say, you know what? You got this. Don't quit on yourself. Go really quick. You'll be done before you know it right? Those are the kind of people that you want in your circle. I love those people that said some things to me early on in my business or, or, you know, kind of those passive aggressive comments. We've all been there, right? And, and even if they're said, even if they're said in a joking way, there's, there's usually some truth, right? There's usually some truth to those comments and that's okay. But when I realized that I could allow comments of other people's judgment or other people's opinions or other people's fears and insecurities, if I allowed them to change what I was doing, that was my fault, not theirs. I can't control what comes out of somebody's mouth. I can't control what other people say, feel, do, but I can control how it affects me. And when you're fiercely protective of your focus, it brushes off. When you are fiercely guarding your circle, you recognize those people who just aren't on the same path as you right now. And that's okay. But when you recognize it, you can also do something about it. You can change the conversation. You can find that person who maybe is your business person, right? Or your health person. You can find those people in your life who are gonna support those goals that you have and are gonna push you to accomplish them. I think the possibilities out there for all of us are truly endless, but we're limiting ourselves with the negative self-talk, with allowing other people's opinions or other people's insecurities to change our course. Protecting your focus and guarding your circle have been some of the most powerful practices that I have put into effect. I now recognize if I'm just mindlessly scrolling Instagram, I'm allowing that to take me off track, right? I'm allowing that to be my influence. And if I'm feeling bad about myself after looking at somebody else's social media, I'm allowing that to become part of my circle and, and allowing that to affect my focus. So I have to stop. What am I doing, right? 
Is this saving me time, making me money or inspiring me? If it's not doing those things and it's just sucking time, then I need, I need to do something else, right? But I have control over that. I'm excited to see how you guys really get laser focused on the things that you want to change, the things that you're working on, your goals, and taking a deep dive and looking at your circle. Who are you spending time with? Are you in group chats that just make you feel like garbage catching up, right? Do you get off the phone with that person and you just feel worse than when you started the conversation? Maybe you limit those calls to five minutes. Just checking in. How you doing? Gosh, I'm so sorry you're having a really hard day. But not allowing it to pull you down. You can be compassionate and still be focused on what matters to you. That's where the awareness of what's happening comes into play. That's where you take the power back. When someone says something to you that's hurtful, if you are aware of the situation, you can allow it to brush off because you know, that's not about me. That is not about me. And that's what I tell myself. That's not about me. I have my floss friends. There are plenty. We could list them. There'd be many podcasts long. But in those moments, I know those comments are not about me. And that's how I can change the conversation. I can stay focused on what I'm doing because it's not about me. I can focus on what is about me, the things that I can control, my commitment, my why, my focus, the work I'm doing to make sure that there are people in my life that inspire me, that are showing the way, and that it's possible to do great things or things bigger than I can only imagine, those are the people that I want in my circle. Those are the people that I want inspiring me and pushing me to show up a little bit better tomorrow. And that's what this podcast is all about. I cannot wait to hear your take on this, how you are really looking at your focus and protecting it and how you are taking a closer look at your circle and assessing who you're spending time with and the influence they are having on you either positive or negative, and what you can do about it. Tag me. I want to hear your takeaways from this. If this was helpful, please share it on social media. I would love to hear your takeaways and how you're putting some of this into action. Stay tuned. We have many more great episodes up our sleeve. We are starting next week with some incredible interviews with people who inspire me so we can learn together. I cannot wait for you to hear from these incredible people um, who I care about so very much and who have made such a big difference in my life. So stay tuned and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the great shows that we have coming your way. Wishing you all a truly, truly wonderful day wherever you are. Protect your focus and guard your circle. It's worth the work. See you soon, friends.